Hello, welcome back to the second uh, video where I'm going to hollow out the inside of this form, the ash form that um, I roughed the outside of previously. I'm using my preferred hollowing tool. I've drilled the hole out down through the centre as um, previously described. <coughs> Set the tool rest up so that it's um, on centre height. Locked my uh, hollowing tool underneath my arm, standing with the legs shoulder width apart, so I'm nice and comfortable. Knees are slightly bent. And I'm using the overhand technique where I rest my palm on the front of the uh, tool rest and that enables me to produce a nice fulcrum I move my whole body. And uh, I start opening out the form here, working down to the shoulder, stopping it regularly to remove any shavings so the tool doesn't bind. Just take my time to, to hollow out and uh, I'm going to leave the wall thickness on this piece around about 10mm thick all the way down to the base. The important consideration being that um, that it's even thickness, so it's no good leaving it thin at the top and thick at the base. The wood will move at different rates and crack. So I'll, um, I'll just move the camera up and um, I'll have a look at the hollowing process. Okay, so everything on the lathe's locked off. The lathe speed set to low before I start, and uh, I've cranked over the uh, hollowing tool in this instance because I'm going to start opening out the uh, the area here. And then once I've started to open that out, I'll start working back down the shoulder. So I'm going to start the lathe, face shields on. And away we go, start bringing the speed up to a safe speed for your, uh, for your method of hollowing. Just use the overhand technique to start with. Keep removing the tool to remove the shavings. <clears throat> now as I enter in with the tool, I'm just rotating it about 45 degrees anti-clockwise. This lessens the cut. Then once I've picked up the cut, I can rotate the tool back clockwise to uh, remove as much material as I want. Uh, regularly to get rid of the, um, the shavings. Now I don't blow these out with an air hose because that sends up all the, the fine dust which will get into the lungs into the atmosphere so I just see the uh, just hook it out with my finger to start with and then I use a hoover um, afterwards to suck them out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carry on and just uh, open out this down to here um, and then I'll crank the head around and um, explain about how I work on the shoulder. So I will see you shortly. So I've hollowed out the form up into the shoulder here and I've opened out uh, the main central area. I'm going to continue working along this piece here uh, but I've also started um, opening out down towards the base. So the benefit of drilling a hole down through is that um, I can put the cutter in. When we're hollowing we can't see the cutting process so we need to be able to feel. Don't want to be bending over looking in a hollow form as we hollow. We want to stand with our back nice and straight, knees bent, legs uh, or feet shoulder width apart. And uh, so I can use the, the hole to indicate when uh, I'm to depth. By doing that I need to rotate the tool anti-clockwise as I enter um, so that it's trailing and uh, this enables me to pick up the cut without seeing nice and gently. I've got a sticker here and a couple of uh, Allen keys but you can use a piece of paint or something as long as you know the orientation of your cutting tip. I rotate 45 degrees I can then go in gently until I pick up the cut and then move my body around, move my body in an arc and the cut will come off as I go across the hole. I can then move my body forward slightly and then cut back out and I can continue doing that until the cut goes all the way across um, to the centre, at which point we know we're to depth. So I've got quite a bit of hollowing to do here, but I'll just uh, demonstrate that. So the, the grain's running with the spindle axis of the lathe, so I'm going to be cutting the main cut. It's going to be from inside out towards the shoulder, but I can run the cutter up um, in the opposite direction just to keep contact with the cut, um, contact with the wood so I know when uh, to move in and take the next cut. 
So face shields on and I've got the tool rotated inside of the form anti-clockwise cutting tips on centre height and the handle slightly high in the cutting tip so it's trailing. So I'm just going to bring the speed up. Just going to go in, pick up the cut. There's the tool. It's not cutting because the tool's trailing. And now I can move up. There's the, the hole because the cut come off. You can hear it's not rubbing. Now I can rotate the tool clockwise to pick up the cut. And I can keep doing that until I've picked up the cut that I want. And then I just carry on. So it cuts off. I can move in a bit more. And now I can cut that off. Once that cut goes all the way across the same, then the feel goes all the way across the centre, then I know uh, onto depth. So I just rotate the tool anti clockwise so it's 45 degrees, switch the machine off, and then I can take the tool out safely. So I'm just going to carry on now, following this, taking it um, to depth, and uh, I'm just going to check with my fingers down to the shoulder. And then once I've um, got beyond the reach of my fingers, then I'll just use a a set of calipers um, to check all the way down to uh, the thickness all the way down. Um, like I said, I want the wall thickness 10 millimeters, approximately all the way down, equal. Um, if you're out a few millimeters, it's not going to make a huge difference, but um, we want to get in the habit of making it as precise as we can. So I'm going to carry on, remove these shavings, and then. Um, remove the rest of the wood from the inside and talk about how I'm going to sort out some of the, uh, the knots and things that I've got uh, on the on the form. Okay, so the piece has been roughed ready for seasoning just before uh, I season it or I'm going to set it away to be seasoned. I want to stabilize the knots and bark inclusions which I have in the piece. So normally I would um, prefer to turn wood that doesn't have uh, any knots or bark inclusions because it gives me a, a much higher chance of its um, seasoning without any cracking. But this piece of wood's got some nice markings in it so uh, I chose to turn it and um, so I just need to, to seal these. And the way I do that is with thin CA glue just drop into the, uh, the center of the pith of the chute and then I just rub in with a piece of folded uh, paper. Obviously I don't want to get my fingers stuck to the form but I do have a debonder close by which is in reach. Um, I've got a little bit of uh, spillage there. It's okay I've got a lot of material to, to turn off of this once um, I remount it so it's around about 10 millimeters thick at the moment so that will be taken down to half of that and this will uh, this staining will be removed. If I was turning a form thinner um, then I'd use a, a medium viscosity CA glue which um, which won't run but it also won't penetrate the pith as deeply so there's there's an offset there so what I'm going to do now is remove it from the um, chuck and place it in a, a normal carrier bag plastic carrier bag and I just scrunch the top up fold it around and leave it in there and every two or three days I just take it out of the carrier bag feel if there's any moisture inside the bag if there is I turn it inside out if there isn't any moisture inside the bag then I just leave the top open and I keep doing that um, rotating the bag until the moisture is gone from the inside and then just leave the top of the bag open and I leave it like that for a month. Um, you can weigh them if you want once the weight is stable um, for a couple of months then that will be in equilibrium with the environment of your workshop and then I just take it into the, the house for a couple of weeks to um, acclimatise to central heating and then it will be ready to finish turn. So uh, in the next video I will um, show you how I finish a uh, seasoned form um, by putting it back on the lathe and uh, sorting out the spigot so that we can then hold it in the chuck to, uh, to finish turn it. So uh, thank you for taking the time to watch the video and um, see you soon.